What's going on, everybody? It's Monday. Time for that swift news. Real quick announcement. I'm doing a one day only sale on both my courses, both the take home project course and the beginner iOS dev launchpad course, 40% off today only. There's the code fall-40. Uh, it will expire in about 24 hours from the launch of swift news. So get it while it's hot. With that out of the way, throw up the rundown and we'll get into the show. First up, Swift is officially on Windows. Now this has been in the works for quite a while, like over a year uh, here by Salim. Uh, Salim, you see, is a, a member of the Swift core team. He joined uh, about a maybe six months to a year ago, officially. I don't remember the exact timeline, but essentially this is the uh, the announcement of Swift, uh, the very first early version uh, being released for Windows. And I wanna stress early version, as they say right here, right? The Windows support is now at a point where early adopters can start using Swift to build real experiences on this platform. Uh, early adopters is the key word there. Again, this is the very beginning. This is super nascent. It is gonna grow over time, but I think it's awesome to see that it's like official support uh, is now out there. And if you want to, if you're into all this stuff, like all this low level stuff that allows Swift to work on Windows, uh, Salim did do a talk here at the LLVM developer conference. You can check that out. Here's a quick example uh, app that they show, just a basic demo calculator written in Swift uh, on Windows. Now, now again, this is early, this is growing. Uh, it says right here, although the demo application is built with CMake, Swift package manager support on Windows is coming along. So again, the first version, expect this to grow and evolve uh, over time, especially as more people chip in and help out. Uh, there are certain products like early adopters like Riedel uh, that are experimenting with cross-platform applications written in Swift. So, you know, both a Windows app and an uh, uh, I don't know if it's an iOS app or Mac OS. Uh, yeah, it says it right there. So yeah, so things are just getting started on Swift on Windows. If you're interested in that stuff, check it out. Uh, myself, I look like a newborn baby deer if I try to operate a Windows machine. You know, control C, not like where's the command? Uh, anyway, not for me. But uh, if you're into that, check this out. Next up, real quick, Swift Symbols 2 is now officially out of beta, so you can download this. Uh, if you're not familiar with Swift Symbols, as you can see on the screen here, it's a bunch of uh, first party icons that work amazing, you know, in iOS. There's like a ton of them. I think over 1500 was the Swift Symbols 1. Swift Symbols 2 adds 750 new ones. There's now multicolored symbols like you're seeing on the screen. So again, Swift Symbols is a new thing similar to Swift on Windows. This is the, the second year of it, but uh, expect this to continue to grow and grow. More icons coming every year, more multicolored. It's just, I really enjoy this product. I use it in like all my projects now. Uh, it's great. So happy Apple released this. But if you haven't downloaded the official Swift Symbols 2 yet, uh, there it is, over 2,400 configurable symbols. So anyway, it's out of beta. Download it now. Next up, we have an article from Donnie Walls, Dispatching Async or Sync. And it basically goes through the differences between you know, asynchronous and synchronous. Um, pretty basic stuff, but he does a great job explaining it. And he has a great uh, like kitchen restaurant type example that I think if you're not really familiar with all this, it, it really drives the point home. And he starts off with the async, like this chunk of code, you know, many of you have probably written this a ton. I know I have a, I have a snippet for it. I just have DQ and I get this block. It's how often I use it. Uh, but he talks about the async and stuff. And again, he gives the, uh, the restaurant and the waiter example, how like, you know, the waiter will take an order, but the kitchen's back there making it work, but the waiter can take other orders. It's not sitting there just waiting for this one order to be complete before it can take another order. You know, go dive into the example, read the article. But that, he uses that example to explain the differences between sync and async. And again, if this topic always confused you, I, I think that'll clear up with this uh, with this article. And he does give an example, right? I talked about how I use this batch of code, and I'm sure many of you do, like all the time, but I never use sync. Like, I don't think I've, maybe I have, I can't remember a time where I've actually used dispatchq.sync. And then he does give an example of like when he might use it. Uh, and it is basically to ensure that certain properties or values can only be modified synchronously to basically to avoid multi-threading problems, right? Cause that's another issue when you're doing stuff concurrently or asynchronously, like you can get some, some multi-threading issues. Um, but again, dive into this topic. It's, it's pretty fundamental for an iOS developer. And I think Donnie does a great job of explaining it. Moving on, we got one from Antoine Vanderly uh, explaining all the options when it comes to your launch screen on how to build it, like with Storyboard or the new P list and Xcode 12. And many of you may think the launch screen is like trivial, like you probably never even think about it. You just slap an image on there and go. But there's more to that. And this article really dives into that, right? He gives the history on how 
Uh, you would just put an image in an asset catalog that evolved to a storyboard file that you could kind of customize. And now we've evolved to a plist object, which he gets into later uh, in, the, uh, in the article that is, again, new in Xcode 12. That's kind of like the, the new hotness for this. But I like that he goes into this, the guidelines on how to use launch screens, because I bet many of you out there have put zero thought into your launch screen, right? And, that, and most people have, like, don't feel bad. But uh, anyway, he goes into the, the HIG and pulls out some key factors here, right? Using text is discouraged because you can't localize it on your launch screen. Uh, any used images should, should scale for different screen sizes. Yeah, duh. Uh, here's the thing. The screen should be as close as possible to your app's first page, right? This gives the call it an illusion, if you will, that your app's load time is more snappy, right? Because it looks very similar to what your app actually looks like. And then he gives some tips for like actually developing your launch screen. I like this one, because sometimes if your app launches really fast, the launch screen is up there for like a split second and it may be hard to see like what's going on. So he talks about how you can uh, adding a delay to your app's launch. Again, this is just for development, just so you can see what's happening uh, on your launch screen. And then he goes into uh, the two options, right? You can use storyboard, uh, you can use a plist. Again, the plist is the, the new hotness on, on what you can do here. And the storyboard stuff, I'm gonna skim over that because we've been doing that for years now. But the plist configuration, this again, the new stuff. Uh, so if you're interested in doing your uh, launch screen via plist, check out Antoine's article. I'll show you exactly how to do that and all the options you have here. I'll scroll up real quick to the options um, and what you can do, right? You can, you know, respect the safe area. You can add a background color, tab bar, toolbar visibility, like, like all that stuff. So again, if you've put zero thought into your launch screen, read this article. Next up, we have an article about going from idea to paying customer in one month. And really this is the theme on like just putting your products out there, the MVP, which minimum viable product, that's become quite a startup-y buzzword. And it's probably the definition has been pretty muddy because everybody like overuses it. But the, you know, let me scroll down here real quick. Here's the, here's really what it is, right? So I jotted down some notes from an MVP. What's the absolute least I can build to get market validation? Like that's the key thing here, right? The MVP has to deliver market validation or one way or the other, right? Either your idea is validated or it's not, right? And what's the minimum you can build about that? Doesn't MVP doesn't mean just put out a shitty product, like just it has to be able to deliver the answer if it's validated or not. But anyway, that's what this article is about is just going from the idea and here's the timeline, right? First started taking notes, a day later started coding, a couple days later launched the MVP, launched the landing page, and then a month later you get your first paying customer. And and here's the the, the thing here, right? Scrolling down, uh, again, re read through this, but I wanna touch on some highlights here, right? Days five through 21, right? So the first five days, he got the product out there. The, you know, five through 21, like the next two, three weeks, gather feedback, improve, rinse and repeat, right? And this is the whole purpose of like, yes, you, you may be embarrassed of that first project you put out there. You may not want to launch it, but nobody's gonna remember your initial launch, right? Like, do you remember when, when Twitter launched? Do you remember when Instagram launched? Like all the, the apps you use every day, pull up your phone and look at it you probably don't remember any of their launches, right? If nobody was using the product. It just slowly grew over time as they iterated, iterated, iterated and built on it, right? So if you're trying to plan this big splashy launch for your app, nine times out of 10, you're doing it wrong, right? I'm sure there are certain circumstances where a splashy launch may be applicable, but most of the time it's not. So again, read through this article if you kind of want to get the idea, but let's move on to Noah Gilmore here who actually put that idea into practice. And it's another thread on Twitter, kind of like the Aviary uh, Twitter app that I featured a couple episodes ago. Like I love when developers do this, right? It gets me fired up. They develop their app out in the open, sharing pictures all along the way in the Twitter thread, right? So here's what Noah did. Is there an app which cropped your background exactly to make iOS 14 app icons appear transparent? And he says, please tell me so I don't write it in a frenzy tomorrow. And then, you know, here you go. All right, I have not been convinced that this isn't an interesting idea to pursue, at least for a day. Uh, this will be a development thread in the style of Aviary, right? So we'll scroll through a little bit. I mean, it's a long thread. Definitely check it out if you wanna follow the whole process. Um, but you can see he's sharing screenshots all along the way. If you're not sure what the app does, I'll scroll down here. Basically, it it takes a screenshot of your, your wallpaper and then puts it in the app shape at that, at that correct location so that it appears transparent, right? It doesn't matter what your wallpaper is, you know, it'll take a, take a picture of it. So that's basically what the app does. And it allows you to do layouts like, like, well, you can see it in action here, right? He's dragging the app. As soon as he drops the app, it'll take the form of the background. So again, you can lay out your home screen. Again, here's an example of a weird layout, um, however you like, but that's what the app does. But, uh, and it took him like two days and this is what I wanna get to, right? Let me, well, here's an example of like some of the layouts you can do. I'm not, this is not a commercial for the app. I'm just explaining what he built. Um, Anyway, down, down, down. Let's get to the uh, the finale here. Here's what I like. Here's what I like. This is really why I wanted to share this, right? 
and time. They say, if you're not embarrassed by the first version of your product, you waited too long. Like that's a famous LinkedIn, uh, Reed Hoffman, founder of LinkedIn. He's famously said, like, if you're not embarrassed by the first version of your product, you launched too late. Again, it's one of those things people can take too far, but you know, that's the, that's the famous thing. But about 42 hours from new project to waiting for review is really something. And that's, again, that goes back to what we just talked about, right? You have an idea, you build it, you launch it. This is not the final version of transparent app icons, right? I'm sure he's going to get feedback. He's gonna, next version, right? You've heard the phrase, software's never finished. I'm just throwing out quotes left and right, this, this thing, but yeah, software's never finished, right? Look, version 1.0.1. Look at any app you use right now. They're probably on version like 9.3.4. You know, like this is just the beginning, but the idea is to get that first version out there, get the feedback, get some customers, iterate, 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 slowly grow over time, right? It's not about that big splashy launch. I got a thousand users on day one. Like it's probably not the way to go. But again, thanks Noah for sharing this. Like I said, these types of threads, like, always fire me up. And here he says, he's been searching on Twitter, seeing a fair amount of people talk about how to do transparent apps. You know, this whole iOS 14 home screen craze is going nuts. Um, but it makes me really think more and more that there's, you know, against all odds, some amount of value to this relatively simple thing. And that's the idea. Like the first version of your app can just solve one problem, solve one problem and do it well. And then you may have all these other ideas for features on your app, but you can slowly add those in over time. Just do one thing, do it well at first, build upon that, iterate, iterate, iterate. I've said that a thousand times now, moving on. Next up, we have a slideshow about the psychology behind TikTok's addictive feed. And if you haven't watched this yet, you know, he says he's watching The Social Dilemma on Netflix and it's all about, uh, you know, how these algorithms on, on like all these social media sites can be really addicting and kind of the negative effect they're having. That, that's kind of what this is based off of, neither here there. Watch that for yourself. Some people have different opinions on it. Uh, watch it for yourself, come, come to your own conclusion. But uh, this goes through basically how TikTok's feed is so addicting and it's very interesting. Like I'm not saying you should make your app addictive, you know, like a slot machine, but what I do think is valuable about this as developers, right, is knowing basically how these things work. And I'm not saying like, so you can implement that and you can manipulate people's brains too, but I just think there's value in like knowing how this works so you can, choose to implement it, you know, in a more maybe ethical way, or I don't know, I just think having knowledge of this is very valuable so you can navigate this like new world we're in, right? If you have no knowledge of this, it's much harder to navigate. But again, this is a really great slideshow. I highly recommend going through it. it, it I was fascinated by it, talking about building habits in your app and then like reinforcing those habits. And then he talks about like, uh, you know, how they insert ads at like the great point, which again, it, this is not like something I'm recommending you do, but it's just fascinating stuff to see like, how all this like really works and how it really like can like manipulate you. But anyway, check that out. If you haven't watched The Social Dilemma on Netflix yet, check that out as well. Next up, we have a fun YouTube video by Apple Explain called The History of iOS. And as you can see on the screen here, he just goes release by release, showing how it changed and evolved and new features got added, you know, over the past, well, over a decade now, right? And again, it kind of goes back to, I'm not saying the iPhone was an MVP, but it goes back to like, the iPhone was missing very, very basic features like when it first launched, like copy and paste, I don't think was implemented until like three years after the iPhone, you know, was launched. So the, the app store was like over a year afterwards. So the point is like, launch that early version of your product and you're just gonna build on it. Again, software's never finished, your launch is just the beginning. Okay, I feel like I've beaten that dead horse pretty hard now, but this is a fun video. I highly recommend watching it. Again, link will be in the description. And then finally, AR kit corner from Oscar Falmer here. Uh, outstanding use of the LiDAR sensor in AR kit body segmentation. So this might actually be the best use of AR kit I have seen so far, because you can see how, like a lot of the AR kit demos have been exactly that. Fun proof of concept demos. Like I said, it looks like an acid trip. You're like, okay, that looks cool, but you know, how is it useful? Um, this is like the, the most useful thing I've seen, I think so far. And you can imagine when you have glasses, but basically, your body can now interact with the AR elements using that body uh, stuff here, right? So you put that thing on the ground, you can step on it and that stops your time, right? And the example here is like running around the track. You wanna, you know, see how far you've run. So you're just running, imagine you're wearing your, your AR glasses while you're exercising, you step on that, stops your timer, tracks all your exercise. Like, that's awesome. Like this is again, this is the first thing I've seen where I was like, oh, there you go. Like awesome. So anyway, that wraps up this week's episode. Again, one day only sale fall 40 is the code as you see here. Check that out and we'll see you in the next episode.